Are you struggling to find a fulfilling career? Maybe you're tired of the nine to five and you've heard about private equity, you think it's really interesting, but don't really know where to start. Well, one of the places a lot of people start is through search funds. And now a search fund has been around since probably sometime in the 1980s, was really developed at, at Stanford. And the idea was there was a professor that had a couple students that wanted to buy a business. And so he gave them some money to go and find a company, buy it and run it. And then ultimately they sold it and he generated this great return. And they were, they also generated a great return because they got a big piece of the equity. This evolved quite a bit until today you've got lots of firms and accelerators and other groups that are out there all supporting and investing in searchers as they're called or search funds. Now, what is a search fund? How does it work? Well, it's kind of like a very, very mini private equity fund of one to two people. Uh, a good friend of mine, Deb Tan, is one of those searchers. After graduating from undergrad, she went and worked on Wall Street for one of the large investment banks. And after being there for a few years, she went to Harvard to get her MBA. At graduation, she was like, what do I wanna do next? And really fell in love with the idea of search funds. So I sat down with her and just peppered her with tons of questions on how are search funds structured and what is the industry like and so forth. And so I'm going to share some of the things that I learned as well as what I've seen working with other searchers over the years. Now, first, let's talk about what is a search fund. Now, like I said, a search fund is kind of like a mini private equity fund. Essentially, what happens is a searcher or somebody that works in the search fund or that's putting it together will go to investors and say, hey, I am an exceptional leader and operator and I want to go buy a business and I want your help. In exchange for giving me some capital up front to cover my salary, living expenses, travel, etc., I'm willing to give you first rights of refusal and quite a bit of equity when I buy this company that I'm going to go out and find. I'll also give you quarterly reports so you know what's going on and hopefully thereby reduce your risk. Now, the amount of money that they raise varies, but is typically somewhere between four hundred dollars and $700,000, depending on inflation and market and expertise and what kind of business they're going to buy, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes it edges up a little bit higher towards the like eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars $900,000 if you have two searchers working together. But, you know, median is somewhere in the like five hundred, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars $550,000 range. Now, that money should buy you enough runway to be a searcher for about two years. So typically searchers are gonna pay themselves, let's say they raise 500,000. They're gonna pay themselves probably somewhere between 100 and $200,000. That will leave them with a little over $300,000 to spend on you know, hiring uh, interns maybe, paying legal bills, travel, working with bankers, legal diligence, all the things that they need to do in order to find an investment opportunity or a company to buy, do the due diligence, and follow through with raising the money to complete the acquisition. So what'll happen is over those two years, they'll spend a lot of time trying to find a deal. So over, the, over those two years, they'll work tirelessly to try to find a deal because at the end of those two years, or when they've used up all the money, it's done. And you know if they haven't found something, then you know it'll just be kind of a waste for their investors and, and also for them to a certain extent. During that time period, they'll need to come up with an engine to help find the company they want to buy. I know some searchers, they build out an army of interns uh, where, you know, they'll go to a university and they'll pay, you know, 10 to $15 an hour and they'll have all these interns that are literally smiling and dialing for deals. They're just calling lots of companies, uh, hopefully within like a sector that they're really excited about, but generally they're just kind of canvassing a large area and trying to find kind of that diamond in the rough. Other searchers use a more strategic approach. They might say, hey, I am really interested in, uh, you know, personal care. And so I'm going to go look at personal care businesses. Or, you know, I think there's an opportunity to buy a really good HVAC company and roll it up with a few more and build it into a much bigger business, similar to like what a private equity fund would do. There could be a lot of different strategies. Uh, and it also kind of depends on what that person's background is. So if they come with a lot of expertise in a particular industry or sector, right, then they're obviously going to spend more time hunting for deals uh, in that sector. Let's say they find their deal. 
Well, now they're get, they have to package it all up and go back to their original investors that gave them the money in the first place. The thing that's interesting about that is when they go back, they're doing two things. One, they're selling the deal, but two, they're also selling their job in the deal. Because once they acquire the business, they're actually gonna typically take a CEO or COO position in the company. They'll negotiate some sort of salary, somewhere in the, you know, call it roughly $200,000 range, depending on where the business is located and inflation and so forth. But you can imagine somewhere in that range. So, you know, a healthy salary for sure. And then over time, they'll get, they'll earn their equity in the business. Now, in this case, the, the way that they are structured is typically the investors that are coming into the deal and providing the capital will take preferred shares and a majority of the board. They basically sit in control, but the day-to-day -day operations are left to the searcher and they are working hard to earn their equity, which amounts to a total of t typically 25 to 30% of the business. And they'll earn that over time. So once they close the deal, they'll get a chunk of equity, usually about a third of it. As they hit certain milestones, they'll earn additional equity. And then when they sell the business and generate a meaningful return back to investors, they'll get an additional chunk of equity in the business, that, kind of that remaining one third. And usually these investors are targeting IRRs, internal rates of return on their investment, in the, you know, 20 to 30, maybe upwards of 40%. So if you feel confident that you can go in, buy a business, help it grow, and then sell it and generate a 20 to 30 to 40% return, then that can be a really great uh, investment for you where you end up with 25% of a really great business without having to put up any of your own capital and getting paid all along the way, just like a private equity investor would, frankly because you get paid to find the deal. Once you find it, you get paid to operate the deal. And once it exits, you take out a big chunk of equity right alongside the investors. The other piece to keep in mind too, is a lot of these businesses are funded with debt. So when the searcher identifies the company, they're gonna use uh, dollars from their investors as equity, but then they'll also typically borrow money from banks as well to to, to consummate the transaction. So just like a private equity fund, they also get some additional benefit from the leverage that they're putting on the business. This also means though that a lot of these searchers are gonna be looking for businesses that are generating positive cash flow uh, versus ones that are more focused on growth, let's say. All right, so what does all this mean for you? Well, I think if I were you and you, I wanted to get into the search fund space and become a searcher, First, I would figure out like, what's my unique angle? Is it that I went to a prestigious university and can tell like, hey, I'm really smart uh, and capable? Is it I've been working in industry for a long time and I really understand these industries and I have relationships and so on and so forth that give me an edge? Uh, or is it that I'm just like really good at hustling? I'd figure out kind of like, what's my unique angle? Then I decide like, hey, what what's my investment thesis? What types of businesses do I think I could be successful at running and operating and improving? You might also decide that rather than raising money from investors to finance your salary, maybe you wanna take out an SBA loan or, or work off of your own savings. This can be especially useful if maybe you didn't go to Harvard or Stanford or some other top tier university. And so you don't have that credential that you can tout to investors to give them confidence. That doesn't mean that you know, only people from Harvard and Stanford are great entrepreneurs and great private equity investors, because that's definitely not the case. But they oftentimes can have a bit of an advantage when it comes to fundraising. So in that case, maybe you self-fund. You get an SBA loan, you use your savings, whatever it takes, right? Some of the top accelerators include firms like Broadtree and Mixed Gen Growth, where they will bring you in, they will help train you, they will help you find a deal, they will help invest or connect you to their investors and really smooth out the whole process. Of course, the downside of working with an accelerator is that you kind of become a part of their investment team uh, rather than your own investment team, right? They're gonna have a lot of say and push in terms of the type of company that you invest in and acquire and, uh, and how you ultimately run it. So, you know, there are pros and cons, but you know, especially if you don't come from a top tier university, they can be interesting ways to get into the search fund space.
you also like once you've built out your thesis and been able to identify kind of your unique angle, you'll need to go pitch to investors. There are actually quite a few investors out there that love investing in search funds. And the reason for that is because the data shows consistently over time that search funders return significantly above market return. And so there are great funds like Peterson, for example, here in Utah that loves to fund these types of companies. And so if you can go to them and demonstrate why you are a good bet to go find a great business, they and others will be excited to back you. Another great source of capital for search funders are entrepreneurs that have been there and done it. And they ultimately can also be great resources and advisors as you are finding the business, helping you negotiate the terms of the deal. And once you acquire it, hopefully help you make it a roaring success. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in more opportunities in private equity or venture capital and what jobs look like, check out my other video where I talk about how much money VCs make and whether or not all VCs are actually rich or not.